Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We are going to talk today about sotrovimab. You know, recently a lot of attention coming to one drug in treatment of COVID, it's sotrovimab, okay? Again, my name is Pramil Charyat. I work as a program director, transitional residency program director, director of research, I'm also assistant professor of medicine, Akin Psycho School of Medicine. So today, <clears throat> the topic is sotrovimab. Now, we're going to look at what is sotrovimab, what are the indications, and what are the contraindications, and what are the complications you can expect, and all of that we're going to touch during this presentation. Um, so, U.S. Um, uh, FDA issued emergency authorization, right, to permit the use of sotrovimab to treat mild to moderate coronavirus disease, okay? Only mild to moderate. So if there's like a severe um, uh, COVID, there's no indication for the treatment, remember. You heard all this term, monoclonal antibody. What are monoclonal antibody? They are man-made protein that can help your body to fight off COVID and reduce the risk of severe disease. Um, so you have, um, when you talk about um, monoclonal, there's monoclonal antibodies and polyclonal antibodies. So let's look at some of the difference between monoclonal. If it is monoclonal, it protects large amount of specific antibodies are very specific. Remember that they are very specific, okay? When it's polyclonal, it's not as a non-specific, they produce large amount. And <clears throat> monoclonal antibody uh, recognize only one epitope of an antigen. So whatever the spike protein they go over, only recognize that one epitope. And recognize, multi when you talk about polyclonal, it recognize multiple episodes in, in one antigen. Polyclonal is very inexpensive, but at the same time, monoclonal is an expensive, high technology is needed, okay? So remember some of the difference between monoclonal and polyclonal. So mechanism of monoclonal antibodies, um, it's a recombinant human IG, IgG1 kappa monoclonal antibody that binds to a conservative epitope on the spike protein receptor binding domain of the COVID-19. Again, the term everybody know about the spike protein. So they have an epitope and they bind onto that. It's very specific. We talk about why monoclonal is there. You know, we have the specific site on the epitope. It inhibits the undefined stuff that occurs after virus attachment prior to fusion of the viral and cell membrane. FC domain of the sotrovimab includes M428L and the N434's amino acid substitution that extend antibody half-life but do not impact the wild type FC mediated effector function of, in the cell culture. Now, what does it the composition? Again, we talk about it's a human um, immunoglobulin IG1 kappa monoclonal body consists of two identical light chain polypeptide composed of 214 amino acid and uh, each has two uh, identical heavy chain, okay? Um, and uh, it is actually composed of 457 amino acids. It's actually produced by a, chi a produced Chinese hamster ovary cell line as a molecular weight if you want to look at about, you know, 149 kDa. Now, <clears throat> the composition. So you have to know, like, why do we need to know the composition? A lot of people, when we talk about sotrovimab, we always think it's only sotrovimab, right? So, but it's good to know what are the other content in the sotrovimab, because sometimes you can have allergy. They will say, whatever product you're allergic to sotrovimab, you should cannot take this sotrovimab. So, so it's important to find out what are the compositions? So we went and looked at it, what are the compositions? The composition, yeah, of course, it contains sotrovimab. It contains L-histidine. It contains L-histidine monohydrochloride, L-methionine, polysorbate, sucrose. The solution of sotrovimab, the pH, if you look at it, is around 6.0. Now look at the, do, look at the uh, dosage. It's a sterile, preservative-free, clear, colorless, yellow-brown solution given as an injection. You got 500 milligram per 8 ml solution in a single dose. You get one single IV infusion and administer 500 milligram diluted sotrovimab by IV infusion. Take 30 minutes. So if you go to the hospital, expect to be in an inpatient center for 30 minutes to in order to get this. Okay, take 30 minutes to deliver. Indication. Um, anybody, even a pediatric patient, greater than 12 years age, okay, uh, who are greater, I mean, 40 kg weight, and they have a COVID testing. And remember, we talked about usually uh, people for the high risk of progression to severe disease. Once they become progress to severe disease, there's no role. Let's say mild to moderate COVID, there's a role for uh, sotrovimab. 
So let's look at the evidence. What is the evidence of sotrovimab? In this study they published they had like sotrovimab 128 patients and the placebo we got 529 percent. I mean I'm sorry there is 529 patients in the placebo. Sotrovimab also 528 um, and then they compared it there was a relative risk reduction was about 85 percent. Okay so p-value is 0 0.002. The studies have clearly shown only the term we have to use is the mild to moderate disease. Limitations. Um, they don't recommend giving um, <clears throat> sotrovimab to hospitalized patients due to COVID-19. Um, they require oxygen therapy or they require an increase in baseline oxygen flow rate due to COVID-19 and no benefit in the patient hospitalized due to COVID-19. Um, so even if you give them, uh, I think monoclonal antibodies, the outcome is not good. It could be even worse. Okay, contraindication again. This is like before you get it, you always need to know, like, am I going to have some allergic reaction, right? Everybody is kind of concerned. Anytime you get an injection, am I going to have a reaction to it? So what is like, is there any allergy? Like any history of anaphylaxis to sotrovimab? And then also you have to look at all the contents we talked about, alkystidine and all of that. Any, if you have any, any allergic um, reaction to any of those contents we talked about, right? Alkystidine, if you have an allergic to that, you cannot use it. If there is an allergic reaction to um, histidine monodihydrochloride, if there is any reaction to L-methionine, polysorbate, sucrose, you should not be using it. Okay, remember that. I don't think any, um, um, any other information is given on that. It's very important to know that anaphylaxis uh, reaction. A pediatric dose, um, you can use in greater than, we talk about like um, greater than 12, greater than 40 kg safety. I mean, you know, anytime you use like some of this COVID-19 drugs, there's also like, I mean, you know, we don't know much about it. Like um, there's more studies need to be done, but we know when you look at the risk versus benefits, it's important to use. Dose in renal liver disease, Again, there's no like, clinical trials being conducted, so we cannot say. But so far, it's been okay. I mean, you know, we still need to like more studies, so we can. We don't have any information about this. We know it's not eliminated. In the, this renal impairment is not expected to affect so far. The dose in lactating people, no. Again, not available data on the presence of sotrovimab in human or animal milk. The effect of the breastfeed and the development of health benefit breastfeed should be considered along the mother's clinical need of sotrovimab. And all of the decisions we have to know, this is a pretty much a life and death decision in the high risk people, right? Risk versus benefits, we need to look at it. Again, a lot more, all I'm going to say is we need a lot more studies to get some information on this, okay? Pregnancy, again, insufficient data, um, and the pregnancy only if there are benefit. So uh, it can, it's a, in a cross-reactive binding assay using protein area and rich for human embryo fetal protein, no off-target binding was detected in sotrovimab. That's maybe a little bit of good news, okay? Um, potential benefit of placenta benefit or risk of placental transfer to developing fetus is not known. Background research on the, you know, major birth defects, miscarriage for, in, again, in a lot of information, we don't know much about it. Now, effect on fertility, not many clinical trials on that either. Adverse reaction, like what kind of infusion related, re related reaction you can exit, you can get when you take it. I mean, this is um, fever, you can have difficulty of breathing, reduce oxygen saturation, chills, bra tachycardia, bradycardia, chest pain, weakness, altered mental status, um, and angioedema, throat irritation, hypersensitive reaction, any kind of allergies to the drug or its component we know, okay? Um, clinical worsening of COVID-19 administration um, has been reported. You know, some patient it has been reported. Some of them kind of like uh, can get worse. Again, thank you so much. Again, so trovimab is the drug. Uh, monoclonal antibody, only a monoclonal antibody shown to have benefit about the um, uh, Omicron variant. It also works on the other uh, variant also. So it's a very important monoclonal antibody. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. And uh, thank you again.